um, you wanted to you mentioned something about Brazil uh, with the impeachment process. A lot of coverage by uh, Glenn Greenwald over at The Intercept. Uh, tell me a little bit more about what you've been reading and uh, what you want the audience to hear about. Yeah, I, I think for anybody who's, you know, a little bit versed in international and international politics going on, you have a center left party in Brazil that is corrupt. And basically the opposition to that party is basically trying to move forward with an impeachment process to remove uh, the, the current sitting president, I believe. Now, here's the problem with that. They're going to replace that person not with someone from the same party. Mm -hmm. They're going to replace that uh, the elected person with someone from the opposite party that lost the election. Wow. And the, the, whole, the whole ground of this impeachment process is supposedly for corruption charges, but let's face it, you know, South America deals with corruption on a daily basis. Like it's 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 something that they've always had a problem with. And it doesn't matter if you're with the left wing government or the right wing government. The corruption is not going to disappear. In fact, mm -hmm. they're replacing her with someone who's already more corrupt. Right. And it's just unbelievable. Like basically they're using this corruption to kind of circumvent the democratic process. If the person is corrupt, you need to beat them at the ballot box. You shouldn't be trying to remove them through some kind of impeachment process for which there's no legal basis, really. And the person who's, who's going to replace her has already admitted that as much as a year ago. And this is all in Glenn, Glenn Greenwald's piece on The Intercept. And I think when you think about Latin America in particular, all the coups that have gone on, all the, the, the destabilization efforts and, you know, the United States involvement down there to various ends, mm -hmm. you know, you have to really understand that down there they are fighting an ideological war against neoliberalism for the most part. Hmm. And it almost mirrors what we have going on here, except they're coming from a much darker place. So whereas you have things running out of control there, things are a lot better here, so we don't see the effects as much as we see it there. But mm -hmm. if you look to South America, you will see this is what happens when right-wing ideology runs amok. And so, now they're trying to come back from that, and the right is trying to resist. Yeah, so today, actually, in the news, right in that story, um, so the, today the Senate is, the, the Senate in Brazil is voting on whether to go forward with an actual impeachment trial for uh, uh, Rousseff, uh, and she made a last-ditch effort to, um, to their Supreme Court to try to stop it, but it was rejected, and so now they're in this, they're, they're potentially moving forward with this, and it's not as though they are going to someone who they can even claim is less um, less corrupt. You know, it's it's not as though no, they're actually he's been moving in, three in a already. E exactly. So it's just interesting the grip that this type of politics has not only here in the United States but abroad. Um, uh, uh, Glenn, Glenn, I can't say Glenn Greenwald, right? Um, he's doing some fabulous reporting on that over at The Intercept. Um, so, Nick, I'll tell you what. Do me a favor and stand by. Um, I'm going to try after the interview. We're going to circle back, and I want to talk a, a couple of, about a couple of more things with you. Uh, and I, wanna t I want you to tell everyone about your show that's coming up and the interviews that you have coming on. Um, they're really big. So, uh, really, actually, we have about 30 seconds. So, tell everybody about the interviews just in case they're not here at the end of the show. Uh, basically, I'm going to be doing some interviews with notable authors. I have a almost like a list that I have on the side here of people that I'm trying to get to mm -hmm. interview because there's a lot of information out there that I really think this platform could really benefit from and, and exposing our viewers to it. Mm -hmm. But right off the bat, I'm going to be bringing on Thomas Frank and John Perkins. John Perkins, the author of yep. a new com the New Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Yep. And I'll also be doing Thomas Frank. And then I'm going to try to mix in, you know, great minds from various, you know, various different books that they've written or various causes that they're supporting yeah. and probably have those interviews up for everybody to see. Cool. We've got to connect, compare notes on who we're going after for on the interviews, because I'm not going to lie. I wanted to get Thomas Frank, but you got him first. So go ahead with Thomas Frank. I'm not going I'm not going to steal him <laughs> from underneath you. Uh, but let's compare notes on the next interview. So I'm really excited about that for you and for the channel. So I want everyone to be here for those interviews, which will be live. The first one is on what date, Nick? The first one should be May 16th. OK, that's the uh, next Next Monday. That's Monday coming Monday. up. Monday. Right. And then the second one, I believe, is on the 23rd, correct? 
Yes. The okay. second was on the 23rd, John Perkins. Great. We'll be doing a lot of promotion for it. Looking forward to both of those great interviews. We want you guys here. Support Nick on his show as he gets ready to launch it from the interview perspective. Nick, thanks so much. Um, I'll buzz you up as soon as um, soon as I'm ready to get a, the end part of the show, okay? No problem. All right. Thanks, man.